So over the last couple of weeks, what have we done? Well, we started out talking about the problem that we all have. A common problem that we all share is what sin, right? We, we started out talking out, uh, about sin and the solution uh, that is uh, uh, the only solution to sin, which is Jesus Christ. And we've been building on that week after week after week. And uh, we even talked about uh, along the way, we, we talked about the fact that, that, that Jesus, uh, he wants to be what? Our Lord and Savior, right? You, you remember, he didn't want us just to, to use him as a get out of hell card, right? No, he wants to be our Lord and Savior. He wants us to have relationship with him. And in last week, what we did was we looked at a story. And when we looked at that story in the Bible, uh, again, I think that we're all familiar with it because it's all of our story as well. We looked at the story of the lost or the prodigal son, the child who had been away for a long time. And, and we saw in the life of the prodigal son, we saw an example of what repentance or turning away from sin and turning toward God, what that'll produce in our lives. Uh, uh, you remember, uh, it, it all started with the prodigal son. Again, when he found himself in the pig pen, Y'all remember that? Yeah, he, he found himself, and we talked about the fact that the, the, the first step of repentance was what? Realization, right? He realized that he was what? He was created for more than the sin he was caught up in. That God had a higher purpose for him, right, than where he currently found himself. So the first thing he did was he started with realization. And, and then at the moment that this prodigal son who, 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 who had spent everything and all the effort, at the moment he repented, at the moment he turned around, what did he see? He saw the father running full speed after him, right? Because we just discovered that what? Repentance what? Make Makes the father run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all were listening last week. Boy. I love that part. <laughs> and what we also discovered was this, is that repentance, right? Repentance, the quick the father was, get this and get that. And my son that was, that was lost is now found. The one who's dead is now back alive. That we discovered that when we repent, what? That repenting resurrects what sin caused to die in our life. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and finally, where we left off, we left off talking about a process or actually a pathway that all of us need to follow in Acts chapter 2. So I'm going to start out today in Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 37 through 39. And you'll recognize this verse from last week. This is when Peter is talking and he's preaching. And again, we said so much about Peter who was so afraid and who was so uh, um, um, on the out, so to speak, but then he received the Holy Spirit and he became bold. And Peter's preaching and he says this, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you, here's the process, you must repent of your sin. Say repent. repent. You must turn to God. Say turn to God. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And then, here it is, then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Y'all see that process right there? Yes. Repent, turn to God, be baptized, and receive the gift. By the way, we're going to have baptism next week. So if any of you are wanting to get baptized, uh, we'll talk about that at the end of service. But um, anyway, but the thing that I want you to see, again, about repentance is the very last step of that says that after you're Repent after you turn to God, after you are baptized, the next part is what? Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because repentance releases the Holy Spirit. So what I want us to do today, the, the, the title of the focus of where we're going today is simply this. Uh, Holy Spirit, a partnership of power. Holy Spirit, a partnership of power. Will you say that with me? Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. A, partnership a partnership of power. Of power. 
Now, I, I, I'm going to tell you this, and I really, truly, truly urge you in your groups, in, the, in your Purple Book groups, please, or if you're doing it on your own, please, please, please take time as we start lesson four today, please push into that lesson because there is so much. I literally could have spent six weeks just on this section alone. And so I'm not going to touch everything I need to in this section. So please let the Holy Spirit minister to you and really get into uh, learning more uh, concerning Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So now I don't know, are there any reality TV fans here in the room? Any, any reality? No one. Oh, just a few. She's like, <laughs> she's like, Ito's like, uh, I, I, I won't ask you which one. I, I, I know you've been watching the housewives. I'm like, I ain't going to talk to you about all of that. Uh, my, my sister was on a show uh, called House Hunters. Anybody ever seen House Hunters? So, yeah, my sister was on House Hunters a couple years ago. And, and what I discovered was uh, reality TV isn't really that real. <laughs> it, it's like the process of the, I'm like, no, that, that's not, that's not what they show to you. No, no, no. But anyway, beside that, um, one of the most popular and long lasting shows, reality shows that remains on television uh, is a show. I think everyone is, I look around the room, I believe that you're all familiar with it. It's the show called Survivor. Oh, yeah. okay. Any Survivor fans in the... Yeah. I was. Uh, she's like, I was. I know it's been on forever. It's like I was like 20 years ago, but now I'm kind of like... Yeah, but y'all know the concept of the show, right? I don't need to, to go through... Okay, okay. So, so uh, again, it's, it's basically, you know, these folks are flown out to this exotic island someplace in the middle of nowhere. They're competing with each other. They're in a tribe and, and they're competing against other tribes for food and all of this stuff. And, 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 and really what they're trying to do at the end of the day is they're trying to win something called an immunity idol. Right? Y'all remember this? They're, they're trying, to rem uh, trying to win something called an immunity idol so they can't get voted out. Right. You have that idol and you can't that you no matter what the vote says, you're staying. So Sabrina and I, that's one of the things that we like to do. We like to watch survival. And one of the things that we discovered last year is there was an interesting trend that happened last year that hasn't happened in all of the other seasons that we watched. The interesting trend that that we discovered was this. Every single person that was voted out last year, every single one had an immunity idol in their pockets when they got voted out. Every single one. Like, boom, boom, like, oh, well, and, and why is that? Because, because every single one of those folks that, 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 that had an immunity uh, idol in their pocket, uh, they made a mistake of either trusting themselves or trusting somebody else. But every single person, if they would have just used the power that they had, it would have changed the game for them. Amen? Uh, again, see, they trusted in the wrong people, and as a result, they ended up going home. <laughs> they ended up, <laughs> the tribe has spoken. <laughs> they ended up Leaving, watch this, without ever using the power. I encourage you, church, this morning, that even though you're not playing the game of survival, <laughs> don't go home with the idol in your pocket. In other words, watch this, don't live your life never accessing the full power that will change the game for you. Uh, 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 don't live your life, don't walk your walk without the power of Holy Spirit and purpose in your life. Yeah, yeah, amen. So what is Holy Spirit power? What is the purpose of Holy Spirit? Well, 
If nothing else today, I just need to clear up some misconceptions about the Holy Spirit today. Can we do that this morning? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to. I just want to get. I just want to clear up some misunderstandings. And I hope today, by the time we're done, that there's no more confusion. There's no more misunderstanding. That there's no more intimidation of the third person of the Trinity. Amen. So, so I want to demystify Holy Spirit if we can today. Can we do that? Yeah. All right, right. So first thing I want to tell you is this, and I could say a lot of things, but I'm just going to say this. The first thing I want you to know is despite what you've been told or despite maybe even what you have seen, um, <laughs> the purpose and the point of Holy Spirit is to never, say never. Never. It's to never make one person feel holier than somebody else. Come on. See, see, Holy Spirit's not about, oh, 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 you can't do this. Oh. You can't pray like this. You can't preach. Like no, no, that isn't Holy Spirit. Amen? That's pride. That's pride. So Holy Spirit is, again, it, 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 he doesn't indwell or he doesn't back. So, so those people can say, oh, look at us. We're in the Holy Spirit Club. You're not. <laughs> no. Something else I can speak to you about Holy Spirit power is this. <laughs> um, <laughs> Holy Spirit power, again, say is never... Never. is never going to make anyone lose control of their senses. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Right, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> it's silly, right? And do something right. embarrassing or drawing attention to oneself. That's not Holy Spirit. But 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 I got the spirit and I and I and I and I couldn't and I just and I, we're gonna talk about that because one of the fruits of the spirit is self control. That's right. 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 Okay. Uh, no no I, I, I'm starting to make y'all mad already. So the one thing that I want you to understand is this. Again, Holy Spirit is power with a purpose. Power with a purpose. The purpose and the power of Holy Spirit, if I were just to sum it all up in one word, you know what that word would be? To summarize the Holy Spirit in one word, that word would be this, paraclete. Paraclete, say that with me, paraclete. Paraclete. What is the paraclete? Well, the Bible describes it like this. A paraclete is a helper, a comforter, a counselor. Watch this. The translation is actually this. One called to the side of another. Right? When we're talking about the Holy Spirit, when we're talking about the paraclete, we're talking about, again, a helper, comforter, counselor, one who is called, right? Watch this. I have the Holy Spirit in me, but watch this. The paraclete, he also comes to the side of me. See, the Bible says this in the Amplified, John 14, 16 and 17 says it like this. I will ask, Jesus is talking, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper, a comforter, an advocate, an intercessor, a counselor, a strengthener, somebody to stand by you, to be with you, what? Forever. For the spirit of truth whom the world can't receive uh, and take to his heart because he does not see or know him, but you know him because he, Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be in you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I love how, uh, as we're going through this, we see exactly all of the ways that Holy Spirit comes alongside of us, all of the ways that Holy Spirit helps us, all of the ways that Holy Spirit comforts us. The Bible tells us in Matthew, for example, Matthew says that Holy Spirit gives us the right words to say. 
That's right. <laughs> How many of us need Holy Spirit to take over our tongue sometimes? Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, some folks got two. <laughs> yeah, all of that. Yeah, yeah. The, the Bible also tells us that Holy Spirit teaches us and reminds us. Right? Uh, that he guides us into all truth. That, that he tells us about the future. That, that the Bible says in Romans that Holy Spirit does this. That he leads us as children. That he adopts us as his very own child. Uh, that he helps us in our weakness. How many, how many of us know that we need Holy Spirit power in our weakness? I don't know if there's been some folks in here that you have just been at the very end of your rope. You had no idea how. You had no idea what. You were literally at your, at your wit's end. But you don't know how it happened, but you know who made it happen. Amen. That was Holy Spirit power. How else does the paraclete come alongside of us? Let me tell you that the Bible says it like this, that he prays for us. The Holy Spirit, the paraclete, he prays for us. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation, if you've ever been in a time where you just, your mind just runs out of stuff to say. You don't know how to pray. You don't know what to say. But all of a sudden, something will just start bubbling up here. Oh, Shandiyarabakos, something will just rise up from here. And the thing that you don't even know how to pray, all of a sudden, the Spirit will just start praying for you. And say, you just take a seat. I will intercede because I know what you need in your life. That's Holy Spirit. He lives within us. So one of the most clear and definitive purposes and power of the Holy Spirit is defined and listed in Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 talks about it. You're familiar with this, I'm sure. It says this. Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive what? Power, everybody say that. You will receive what? Power. When Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now watch what this power does and what it's for. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, in Las Vegas, and to the ends of the earth. You see... The Bible's very clear. The purpose and the power of Holy Spirit is to tell people about him. Amen. To tell people about him. See, if you look at this scripture, do you know what the scripture is telling you? The main purpose of the power is for other people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's good. To tell it's for other people. He has given us himself, his power to tell them about him. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah? But you know the funny part about it is we read this. We read Acts 1.8 and somehow, somehow we think it's optional. But it really isn't. Well, <laughs> Uh, I'm kind of shy. And, yeah. God knows. He, he doesn't want me to talk to anybody because he knows, huh? <laughs> power. He gave you power. Yeah. Well, but you know, it's like I, I'm, I have like anxiety and I can't really talk to anyone. He'll give you power. Amen. He'll give you power. Well, you know, I don't really know I like the Bible. I don't really. Okay. He'll give you power. Amen. He'll give you power. See, every single reason that you can sit there and say why you can't do it, I got power for that. I got power for that. I got power for that too. So anything or reason you can sit here and think about, that's I, I am justified in not saying anything to anybody. I'll say no, because he's got power to overcome that. Amen. 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 
That's exactly why I gave you my spirit, he says, to overcome that. So going back to the survivor example we talked about earlier, see when it is that we sit there on our hands, when we sit there with our mouth closed, when we sit there and we don't bother inviting anybody to come to church with us, when we sit there and don't say anything to anyone, when we don't witness, watch this, it's like we don't access that power. And it's like we're going home with the idol in our pocket. When we keep our mouth closed, it's like we're going home with the idol in our pocket because we are denying the purpose and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives when we are silent and we don't show it. Is, is, is this tight but right? Is, is that why everybody's so quiet? Oh, I'm just... So, again, we deny the purpose and power when we are silent and we don't show it. Y'all remember, at least in my school, we had a day on, on Fridays, every Friday, my favorite day. Why was Friday my favorite day besides it being the weekend? Because Friday was show and tell day. Y'all remember show and tell day? Right? Right, brought some messed up junk from home or whatever. You know, get up there, make a little presentation about what it is and everybody ooh and ah. You all know that, right? So, again, show and tell kind of sets it up for us because as a believer, what is it that we should be showing and what is it that we should be telling? Right? Y'all know what the answer is? Fruit. Fruit. You should be showing fruit. <laughs> Your action should tell fruit. Fruit. See, I, I love this definition. I thought this was so simple, but so powerful. So, so powerful. I, I, I just love this. Carla, look at this definition. Now, I... <laughs> The power, you see, see, there's a difference. There's a difference between the power and the gift. Oh, oh, let me say it like this. I'm sorry, the fruit and the gift. The fruit of the Spirit is God's character on display. Oh, that's good. The gifts of the Spirit is God's power on display. Oh, that's so good. That's good. Say that again, sir. Thank you. I think I will. <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit is God's character on display. But the gifts of the Spirit is God's power on display. That's so good. I don't know. The purple book just broke down. I was like, oh, come on, perp. Yeah. Perp. 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 <laughs> so to, 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 so I want you to look at this. Because we're going to look at the scripture and, and understanding that definition, understanding that the fruit of the spirit is God's character on display through your life. Now, let's look at this scripture in Galatians. How does this change now? Galatians 5.22 says it like this. But Holy Spirit produces this kind of what? Fruit in our lives. The character of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against, uh, there is no law against these things. So, again, what we show and tell, what we show and tell demonstrates fruit. It should demonstrate the character of God through you. So I don't know if y'all, I know y'all are, because I know how y'all, y'all do. So y'all look at the list of like love, joy, and peace, and you start taking like score, like, okay, I got that one, I got this. Uh, uh, you know, like y'all do the Ten Commandments, yeah, I know how y'all do. I ain't killed nobody yet. Uh, yeah. 
So I know y'all get your little check checklist out right now, right? But let, let's take a look at, 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 again, the fruit or the character of God that's expected in our lives. The first one is what? Love. Say love. Love. What is love? Love is agape, right? This unconditional, the selfless love that shows others the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. That is a character thing that we should display is love. The next one the Bible talks about is joy, right? Well, what's joy? Joy is an inner gladness. Uh, joy, can I tell you, is not based on circumstances at all, but it's based on relationship and a closeness to Christ that will lead you to being blessed. Uh, I, I can, everything in my life can be going wrong right now, but I can still have joy, 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 joy. Now. Yeah, I can still have joy because it's not based on what's happening around me. Joy is based on what God is doing in me. Peace. Ooh, peace, peace, peace. Again, that's the character I should be showing, the fruit. In other words, I need to have some calm, calm on the inside. Because I have faith that God, he has this all under control. He has it all under control. So I have peace regardless of what I'm facing. And then the, the Bible says, as a character of God, a characteristic of God, I should show kindness. In other words, I should be sincerely concerned about others. I, in other words, I don't want to cause you or anyone else pain. Y'all remember the prayer of Jabez a couple years ago that came out? The, the very last line of that was that I won't cause pain. In other words, when I am uh, demonstrating the, 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 the fruit or the character of, of kindness, again, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I don't hurt anybody. Then the Bible talks about goodness. Goodness. Now, all of these sound is similar, but they're, they're really different because when you are focusing or showing and telling the character of, of, of goodness, what that is, is that's making you want to do what is right. Right. Good, goodness is making you want to do what is right. In other words, it makes you hate evil. Amen. It makes you hate evil. Now, there's faithfulness. Again, the, these are characteristics. These are the fruit. This is what people should be able to see when I show and tell, right? Uh, they should be able to see faithfulness. In other words, that's an unwavering devotion, right? Whether I'm devoted to a person or whether a promise, it, it's just me doing what I say I'm going to do. Yep. Amen? Yep. And then there's gentleness. There's gentleness. Now, now, now the, the beautiful thing about gentleness is this. Again, they all sound similar, but this is different. Gentleness really has to do with mercy, right? When I show and tell mercy to somebody, the thing about mercy is what? Mercy is you deserve it, but I'm not going to give it to you. You earn. <laughs> you earn my parents said, you earn this whooping, right? <laughs> But when they didn't give it to me, how was mercy. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I had my two or three extra pair of pants on just in case they decided to change their mind. But come on, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me stop for y'all get y'all get my. <laughs> my, my sibling, your parents. I'm calling CPS on them. Did they? They did not. They did not abuse me. Spare the rock. Okay, let me stop. Get all kind of emails. All right. So again, mercy is treating someone. Okay, look at mercy like this. Think of it like this. Mercy, again, especially, is not giving somebody what they deserve. But this word is actually based around. Somebody who's your enemy. Somebody who may have done you harm. But because you're showing the character and demonstrating mercy, you're not treating them like they would expect to be treated. And again, the final one, the final characteristic or the final way that we show and tell, right, the character of God, the fruit of the spirit, 
is self-control. Self-control. Again, that's the ability, that's the strength to overcome temptation, right? And remain spiritually strong. And, and even beyond temptation, there, there's so much in the Bible that says even like the spirit is subject to the prophet. In other words, there's nothing that Holy Spirit can do that makes you, because it would violate the fruit. It would violate his own standard if he just took over and you couldn't control yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So, I missed patience. Did I? Yep. Oh! I was just testing your patience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, patience, patience, patience. What is patience? Again, the character of God, the, 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 the fruit that you want to show. In other words, patience, y'all, we all need this one, is the ability, watch this, to endure or wait without letting your flesh, your temper, or your mind get the best of you. Yeah, let me take that one off the list. I thought I had uh, Right? Again, not to, there, there's so much stuff that can come up and, and, and without patience, ah! Letting it get the best of us. So, now, here's the thing. We hear and we look at all of the fruit of the Spirit. Right? And, and, and it would be so easy to say, well, you know, pastor, huh, you're the pastor. I'm not. I don't have any initials in front of my name or behind my name. So I don't know how to do this. Wrong. Wrong. Whether you're a pastor or not, you're a minister or not, wherever you are, you still got to have fruit. If you're a teacher, you better have some fruit. If you're an accountant, you better have some fruit. Whatever you are, you need to have fruit. Because watch this. John 15, 1 and 2 says this. This is Jesus. I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. Now, he cuts off every branch ooh, that doesn't produce fruit. And then he prunes the branches that do bear fruit, so they'll produce even more. Now, We've been finding this out. My Monday group, uh, our Wednesday night group, we, we, we keep coming back to this conclusion. And the reality is this, is that week after week after week, what is it that we are judged by? We're judged by our fruit. That's what Jesus is looking for. Do I see fruit? Oh, you're a teacher. Do I see fruit in how you live? Do I see my character? And how you walk, talk, all, all. do I see fruit? See, Jesus, he's not looking for talent. He's not looking for the gifting. He's not looking for ability. He's not looking for skill. He is looking, uh, he's not even looking at, at, at how good looking you are. Because if he was, I don't know if I'd be up here or not. Come on. Oh, thank you, babe. He is looking at what do you produce? What's your fruit? Where can he see his character in your life? Where can he see his character in your conversations? Where can he see his character in your actions? Where can he see his character in your relationship? Because this is the hard part. Because I hate to, I'm not like trying to like scare y'all or anything, but I'm just going to tell the truth. Because based on what we just read, it says that if there is no fruit produced, you will get cut off. Did y'all just read the same thing I read? It says if there's no fruit, you'll be cut off. That branch will be cut off. No fruit ultimately means no connection to Christ. And no connection to Christ 
means ultimately no life, no eternal life. So that's rough, right? That's rough. I got some more rough news for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Here's the part that we don't want to hear, but it's true. That same verse we just read says that, okay, we don't produce any fruit, it's going to get cut off. But if I do produce fruit, I'm going to get pruned. So I can produce even more fruit. <laughs> Why, God, I was doing so good. I was all green and leafy and I had all of this fruit and now. <laughs> We're going to get pruned. Do we have anybody that has a green thumb in the house? Any gardeners? Any? Oh, uh, just, just. OK. All right. Well, this is what I know. When you get when you prune something like you strip it down, like you cut everything that look, you cut it all off. It looks like you are trying to kill something when you're pruning it. I mean, we have a tree that I hate this tree. I, if I didn't have to have this tree in my yard, I would just pull it up and just get rid of it. But you got to have a tree in your front yard. And this tree is like, like leaning up against the house. And it's just, it's just horrible, horrible. And so I needed to prune the tree. Man, let me tell you, they cut this tree. I mean, if, if, if the tree was equivalent to like a hairstyle, it would have gone from like Dell, see those dreads right there and all them locks? It went like from that to like this. Okay, that's how bad the tree looked. It went from that to this. I mean, the tree, well, I'm like, oh, they killed this tree. Like, I'm, I wasn't sad because I hate the tree anyway. I was like, oh, I mean, they cut this joker back. Like, Every single branch was like, pff, pff, pff. like all that was left was like this much of a stump, basically from here to the ground. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Do you know that six months later that thing is back pushing up against my house again? <laughs> right? <Yeah>. Right? <laughs> Pruning hurts. But again, why does he do that? Because again, Pruning produces and shows and tells more of his character in our life. So understand this, y'all. Understand this. We have to learn and trust this, is that there is a huge difference between getting cut off and getting cut back. Amen. Amen. There's a huge difference in getting cut off. Uh, in other words, I'm not, uh, I'm cut off. I have no connection to the vine. But when I'm cut back, I may look bad. I may look naked. I may look dead. But guess what? I'm still connected to the source of life. Jesus closes with this. This jewel. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit, will show much of my character in their lives. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you can do what? You can ask for anything you want and it'll be granted. Because when you produce much fruit, when you display much character of uh, my characteristics, you are my true disciples. And that brings great glory to my father. In other words, what Jesus is saying, listen, y'all, I know for a fact, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're my squad. 
when you show and tell with your words, with your walk, and with your worship. I said with your words, your walk, and your worship. So, I'm going to close now. Finally. Oh, Jesus, thank you. There is a God. I want to just show you something that I've never seen before. And I saw this as uh, I was preparing this message and I was like, wow, I've never seen this before. Um, in 1 Corinthians, Paul lays out the power that we talked about, not, not, not the character side, but the, the power side, the, the gifts, so to speak. He, he's talking about the gifts. And he says this interestingly enough. He says, prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge, all of that powerful stuff, that's going to that's gonna eventually end. That's going to be useless. But love, say love, love, will last forever. And then he goes on to say this, let love be your highest goal. So I don't know if you noticed this, but watch this. When we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, the first one mentioned is what? Love. Love. The fruit. The first character of God mentioned is love. And then when he gets to the gifts, he says the greatest gift, according to Corinthians, is what? Love. Love. So love is both a fruit and a gift. In other words, it's a demonstration of his character and also his power. Love is. And here's the beautiful thing about love. And if you have talked about, if you've talked about these things and you discover the gifts, what you'll discover is this. I may never be able to, I don't know, just pick one, have the gift of healing. I may never lay my hands on somebody and they may never get healed. I may not have the gift of encouragement. I may, there's so many, there's, we studied these before, guys. The, the, the 20, uh, three spiritual gifts. I may never do one of those gifts, but do you know what I can do? I can do the greatest one which is love. Amen. All of us can do that. All of us, we can do the greatest. All of us can do that. All of us can do that. You see, when we master love, right, or, or we display the character and the power side of it, we can't do that. The only way we can accomplish love as a character or show and tell and also do it in power is we can't do that without the paraclete. We can't do that without the Holy Spirit inside of us and beside of us. Hi. My, my, my. You online people are cracking me up right now. Yep. Thank you, Dee Dee. I appreciate the kind comment. Hopefully you can come and join us wherever you are. I want to do this. I want to close out our time with this. Um, I'm going to ask if you're here and we're, again, we're talking about the power side, right? The, the power gift. If you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speak in other tongues, and you, just stand up on your feet real quick. Y'all some tongue talking folks up in here? Look at y'all. I am scared of you. All right. 
All right, so here's the deal. Everybody who's standing up, I want you to come and I want you to line up close as you can to the platform right here. Man, this is all, like seriously, this is like rare that there are that many folks in a church that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay, y'all get like side to side, like shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, y'all get act like you love each other. Now, this is what we're going to do. I didn't get a chance to talk about this at all, so that's why, again, I want you guys in your groups, in your Purple Book groups, to really go through this entire lesson because it's so important because there's stuff I didn't even remotely get a chance to touch today. Um, I literally could be doing this six weeks just on this alone. But one of the ways that the Bible talks to us and, and lets us know and describes the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I've used this example before is that, you know, when I'm saved, it's like I, I drink this water, like I, I take a swig and now I have the water in me. But there's something different when I jump into a, like, a, like a river and the currents just take me in and I have the power of the currents now that's a whole lot more than just the, the water I've taken right. in, right? Right, yeah. To me, that represents the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that we learned in the Bible that we didn't get a chance to cover today is that back in, uh, back in those days, um, Peter, Paul, they, they, would, they would seat or they'd meet somebody and they'd say, uh, have you heard about the Holy Spirit? We didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. Right? right? And the Bible says this. The Bible says, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where, where's my wife. I want to touch the right woman. <laughs> <laughs> she like you better. <laughs> uh, wait, wait. Braids, 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 braids. <laughs> the Bible says that they laid their hands on them and they received yes. the Holy Spirit. Yes. See, I believe what the Bible says. And if we lay hands, that what? Someone can receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do right now is y'all going to turn around and going to face them. And if there's anyone here that you want to receive the Holy Spirit, just come up. Come up. And let them lay their hands on you. Because I believe what the Bible says in terms of laying on of hands and receiving the Spirit.